All right, hello. Gonna get streaming now. Get started on some more game dev. Hello, first viewer. Say hi in the chat if you'd like. Okay. So, uh, we got the gem counter hooked up, we got the timer going, and our score over here, but we don't have any score associated with our time, so we need to make a new script associated with scoring the time. It's going to be called time scorer. from I observable as well as observer. So oops. we're going to have it observe the game timer and then it's going to be able to be observed by the main scorer. I'm going to get rid of those functions and we're going to have it implement these ones. And again, like the other things, we're going to copy the implementation here for the observable because it's the same. Drew those pinky nice Doritos chip. Can we get some Dorito chips in the chat, everyone? See how many people we can get putting Dorito chips into the chat. Let's go. So to uh, instantiate the time score, we need reference to the game timer. We'll call that variable timer. ourselves with that. So now when we get notified by the um, I see I got another viewer. Uh, so when we get notified by the game timer then we're gonna go get the get the time from the game timer, and then we're going to calculate our score from that. So we're going to have a private, private int, calculate score, 
takes in the, uh, the second. Gonna implement that in a little bit. So I think that there was a that there was an I score interface we should be using here that I wrote before. And that one already implements these other two, so um function get score so on notify we'll set score equal to calculate score and then get the time from the timer get current time that to an int. Hi viewer number two. You want to say something in the chat? We got a uh, we got some Dorito chips in the chat earlier. Maybe we can get some more Dorito chips in the chat. get score function is just going to return our cached score. We're going to notify all of our observers as well. See, I got a few viewers right now. If you want to say hi, put something in the chat. So to, uh, to set up the time scoring, we're going to have to uh, instantiate our time score that we just set up. We've got oops, time scorer. And then we're going to have to give that our 
game timer. So we've got the game timer. Previously, I believe. So we tag the time UI with this timer tag so we can get it that way and then get the game timer from there. something similar to what we have up here. So I'm going to copy this part. I think we did that in the victory zone here. Yeah. timer from here we'll do score or better yet we'll just do add score and we'll, we'll do that okay so now we have got the setup for the time scoring. The only thing we don't have here is our function to actually calculate it. So I think from our previous conversation or my previous stream not really having a conversation with anyone yet. If you want to have a conversation, I see I've got a fourth viewer now. Say something in the chat. Hi, I'm W2 Melon's dad. Welcome to the stream. So when we had looked at this before, there's all these gems on the map, and I was counting how many of them were on the main path, so to speak, and it was quite a few. So I wanted to, I wanted to change that, add in some that were very optional. So these ones would be more optional if this jump pad weren't here. 
So I kind of want to move this jump pad somewhere else. Uh, maybe I can put this, uh, put that jump pad there. Or down in here. This one seems like a good spot. So now if you want to get these gems, you have to climb all the way up here and then jump and come back down and then do that gauntlet again. Good to add in some gems here too. I think uh, Control D is duplicate. Yeah. I got a text message from someone who said that they're enjoying watching. They don't want to log in, but uh, thank you for watching. Okay. some of these gems here because I want to have it be a better trade-off between the gems and the, the speed that you're going through the gauntlet so that's why I'm making it uh, tougher to get the gems So now I can see I have a total of 108 gems. There should be less of them that are in the main path. Although it'd be good to put some up here and like have a platform up here. And those guys would definitely add some time. These ones here. Um, I'm gonna get rid of those ones. Those are all too easy. some platforms here. I actually haven't added any of the platforms yet. Um, so to any new any new viewers who are watching, this is me working through this tutorial game that Unity has. Um, I can spend some time recapping what I've added to it, but the, basically the world and the enemies and the, the main player were here, and I'm adding a score system, and uh, I worked on these jump pads and these speed boosts and uh, a few other things. But this is like a mini game tutorial thing that you it give you a project to start with and then I'm working through it and adding stuff to it to uh, learn Unity better. 
That's why it looks like I've got so much progress already, is because I didn't do a lot of this. Here in this mod, they're talking about how to add additional stuff to the level, so we can paint on the tile map. Please note that as we update these projects, okay, our level is made of several tile maps. We can paint and edit these layers to create our levels. Open the tile palette window, window 2D tile palette. That is not there. I probably have to download this package. There's an error searching for packages. May need to sign up. Or well, might not be signed in. I'm definitely connected to the internet right now, so don't know what that's all about, but I'm going to have to get the tile palette before I continue, so let me try reopening the Unity editor. So I gotta get this 2D tile map editor package installed before I can open the tile palette. Clicking and dragging on the palette to scroll around, zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. And then there's um, a 
the base pictures here and I can paint them on. Okay, I want this to be over here, I think. Okay, now I should be able to start painting stuff. So, um, generally it looks like I can jump one, two, three, one, two, three, I can jump at least three spaces. So I can put a platform here. I can put a platform here. Maybe yeah, the first one's not such a good idea. Platform here, platform here. Here and here. So now I can put some gems on those, and those won't be in the main area. Okay. I'm gonna close close the tile palette now. See if this has anything else interesting to teach me about. Um eraser, I already figured that one out. Okay, extra credit.
That seems like pretty good stuff now. Let's add some new gems. Put a uh, gem here. Gem here. And I'll put two gems here. Okay. Now we'll put two gems up here. And then one gem here. I'll duplicate this one to put a gem here. Gem here. Gem here. Okay, we'll put a gem here. Here, put two here, and then we'll put one, two, three up here. All right, so now in total, I have, according to the inspector, 121 gems. I was streaming a little bit earlier today and I was messing around with these curves here. I want to try and optimize it so that the highest score you can get is um, when you try to get 33 gems. So the more gems you get, the uh, higher your higher your score is for those gems. That's what this lower red curve is. And then there's this black curve, which is decreasing, which is representing your score from time as you collect more gems. So if you collect no gems, you do it as fast as you can and you get 85,000 points. But as you collect more gems, it takes more time. And so I've got these functions here to represent basically how much uh, time it takes to get the gems. <clears throat> And then this upper red curve is a, a combination of those two, just addition. And I've got it optimized right now so that the maximum is about 33. But these numbers are not entirely accurate numbers. So this F2 here, this represents the fastest time that you can do it without collecting any gems. I time myself doing that, and so that will, that one shouldn't change really. And then this uh, 116 is the approximate number of seconds to go and collect all of the gems. I should redo that now. This 100 under here is the total number of gems, and that's 121. And then this 11,000 and this 4 are tweakable numbers. Those are numbers that we can that we can adjust to get a a good curve and then we'll go and put those into the to the score functions and then this score should work. The goal of this is to make like a challenging a challenging game right it you if you have like a leaderboard on a game and people are competing to see who can be the highest you won't have some sort of challenging competition in there so if it's simply do it as quickly as you can. That attracts one kind of person who likes to play games, right? That only really interests speedrunners who just like to do things as quickly as they can. But if you have this optimization curve where, well, collecting the gems gives you points, then you have, well, okay, if you just run around, take as much time as you want, collect all of the gems, then that's the way you score the most points. Well, I don't want that either. I want it to be a good balance between going fast and collecting a lot of gems. So that's why I'm doing all this work here. So I want to get this number to be relatively accurate. So I'm going to go run through the game and see how long it takes me to collect all of the gems. Go ahead and save the scene. Then 
we'll go ahead and run it. So here the time's counting, and then as we go and collect gems, it counts up here. So we're shooting for 121. Oh no, I died. There's this little secret room here with some gems in it, so make sure to collect those. those gems. Those ones in a straight line we have to go around to get. Oh. That was that was cheap. I can bash on this game about some things because I didn't do it. So, like, the collision detection is really awful. <laughs> oh, no. There's another secret room here with some gems in it. Okay, I missed one, but the time wouldn't have been any longer if I had not missed that. Oh no, is there not a way to get back up there? Shoot. Okay. That's a problem we gotta solve. One, two, three, four. So these are four blocks away from those guys, which makes them not possible to get to. One, two, three. Just 
just going to select all these things and move them down. Looks like I accidentally got two gems there. Um, <laughs> on the music that might be more interesting than listening to me silently play. I gotta say I did not make the fart noises part of the audio either. That came like that. the bonus room. the collision detection I'm talking about, I was jumping right on top of that guy. up here. I'm just gonna move me. No. This tile pallet thing is messing me up.
No, not gonna accept that. Okay, so <clears throat> that's some number that we can use, I don't know for sure. <laughs> um, so I missed two out of the 120, and it took me, well it took me quite a while because I, I kept dying. Um, I don't know. This doesn't need to be perfect, because I'd eventually like to move on from this game onto my game. So we'll just say it took a minute less than what it took me to get through and collect all the gems. I feel like a good player. All right, so that'd be under an 80 plus uh, 38. Well. 39, it was almost 39. So I'll say 219. And I'll subtract off the 65 seconds it takes to go through it normally. 153. So that's what this number should be 153. And this is 120 because I had a duplicate. So now, now it's tuned to like. 28. So now I want to well, I was thinking 33, but really it should be something like 50% more than whatever's on the shortest path. So, um, there's one here, five, that's six, another five, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, uh, 27, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44. These guys, that would put you up to 49. And then 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. <clears throat> So I think there's still too many on the shortest path, and I'm gonna take some off. Like uh, these guys here. And these guys. I like this initial one here right at the beginning because it sort of it's like a mini tutorial. You pick it up and you see, oh my score went up. Okay. That makes sense. So a player kind of learns there. Um, these ones that are on a curve, those ones have some amount of skill to them because you have to match the curve, right? Same with these guys that are at an angle. Those ones you kind of have to get right. These ones are just free gems, so I'm taking those out. Uh, okay. Eleven, sixteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three. No, it was thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight. Um, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five. 
plus 36, 51. So, okay, I want to tune it for 50% more than that, so basically 75 gems. And there's 110 total now. So I want the max of this curve to be out by like 75. That's pretty good. It's like basically what I'm looking for. almost exactly 75 and I really like the look of this curve too although I wish it would drop off more steeply like if you bother to go get more gems then that it drops off pretty sharply I think I can get that by increasing this number although I may have to zoom out to start getting like really high scores in them. Closer to a million. That's too much. But also maybe this doesn't have to be squared. Maybe this can be 1.5. No, not dramatic enough. Maybe 2.5 and then make this multiplier just a one or two. Hi, Rhino Dog. Thanks for joining. Mm -hmm. Right now, I'm I'm trying to work on a score system for this this uh, micro game. That's what Unity calls it. It's a micro game. I'm working on coming up with a sort of balanced score system.
the goal here is to get this sort of interesting trade-off between collecting gems and oops, doing it quickly. So I'm trying to get it so that the peak of this curve, this upper red curve, is about 75, but then also sort of drops off sharply after that. Let's try gems up to 60,000. Base time score to six hundred thousand. close that's 83 you can tweak it from there that's 70 That seems fine. Doesn't drop off as sharply as I'd want it to. I think I could probably get around that by making this like a th um, square cube and instead of a, or a cube root instead of a square root. <clears throat> Then I have to tweak the other numbers. Again. Alton Jones, thanks for thanks for joining the chat. <clears throat> I've got this goal on the screen that you can see. It's like getting to 25 followers. To be honest, though, I'm a little bit less interested in getting a lot of followers. I more want to have a lot of live concurrent viewers and people commenting in the chat. So anyone who's viewing who has access to the chat, why don't you uh, drop an emoji in the chat or do something fun like that. <clears throat> Drew loves Pinky was doing a doing a Dorito earlier. We can all do Doritos. Just like that. There's a Dorito. Is, it's not a Dorito, but it seems good. Seems good. Do 
Doritos. Yeah, I don't know how you do it if you're watching on a mobile. There's like a little emoji button next to the send message and then you can open up a search bar and you can search in there. Oh, there we go. We got a Dorito from Rhino Dog. Thank you. Alright, this seems good. I'm gonna be happy with this. That's a... that a... Smork? We got some sugar. Hi, Sleepy Ocelot. Thanks for joining. <clears throat> Okay, so let's uh, let's take these functions and move them on over into um, the into Unity into the scripts that we we've written. Ah, uh, there you go. I'm W Two Melvin's dad. Nice Dorito. So we've got our time score here, and I'm gonna do a private float. Nice Dorito, Dalton Jones. Uh, base score equals let's see, six hundred thousand. Okay, and then we have, um, then we've got our power here is 2.3, so I'll have a variable for that, we'll do private float, power, um, we'll, just, we'll call it score power, 2.3f, okay. <clears throat> Okay, so, and then F4 is, is this equation up here, which is basically the time. This is like a time estimate for how long it takes to get the different gems. So F2 is our base time, 65, that's the fastest you can run it. And then 153 is the amount of seconds it takes to get all 110 of the gems. So that's what the F4 is. It's just the time. So we use our math F here and we'll do power. And our base is gonna be the seconds. And then our power is gonna be score power. Okay, and then we're going to add our base score. And then we're going to cast that all as an int. <clears throat> okay, now we have to update our time or our score for the gem. So back in our scoring subdirectory, we have our uh, Okay, compiling. Gem score script, we'll get this guy open. Previously we were just doing 10 times the count scored. But now we've got a little bit more complex, so we've got our multiplier and then our power, and where G is the number of gems. Um, private float score multiplier. That's going to be the, we decided 80,000. And then we're going to do a score power again. And this is going to be 1f divided by 2.5f. The f here. For those who are not programmers, that designates that it's a floating point, basically it's decimals. Okay. 
Okay, and now our score is gonna be score molt times math f dot power and we're gonna have the base be the count and the power is gonna be the score power. And then we're gonna cast that as an int again. Okay, now here's the heads up display. And then this panel on the right is shows our score. I wanna make sure that this can fit. So um, let me try just putting in a, a million to see if that fits appropriately. Yeah, that looks like it fits well. Let's go ahead and start the script up and see what happens. Oh, not updating this score anymore. Why is that happening? Okay, so something's going on where the only the collection of the gems is updating it. So let's go back to the main scorer. Okay. What we did not do is we did not register the time time scorer as, or we did not register the main scorer as an observer of the other thing. Actually, what we should do is we should just um make that part of the add score s dot register observer this So that if the there's some sort of error with the detection of the gem counter and such that um, <clears throat> it just won't add a null a null gem score to the list.
So now what we should see is that the, the score is going to change as the time goes on. Although I think we did a plus instead of a minus. <laughs> Yeah, it should be base score minus this other stuff. Let me stop the game. So now you see, as we play, the time the score starts to count down as, as time is going up, but we're not doing anything. <clears throat> and then when we go pick up a gem, our score goes up quite a bit. So let's see how high of a score can we get. Nice, we got a score of 981,329. That might be a bit too high. I also didn't pay attention to what my final time was. Should have done that. Okay. Well. One other thing I wanted to do is that you notice when I click play, time starts counting right away. And sure, you have access to move right away. But if you just sit there at the beginning, the time is going up and you're losing score. So it would be good to think that it would be good to wait until you press a key or something to start the timer. So let's look at doing that. So the way we have it set up right now is um, the game timer just calls start timer on awake, which is probably not the best way to do it. So here in the player controller, we have this update function. This gets called before every frame. And here's where we get the inputs and stuff.
So our game timer is a mono behavior, which means that we also have access to this update thing. Which means we also have access to the input there. So we can just uh, we can just check for it there. So I'm gonna make a function that's like it's gonna be a private function. It's gonna return true or not. Um, and it's gonna be Is there input? And this will basically do the same checks that we're doing over here. So we have input dot get access horizontal, which returns a float. Um, so we're gonna check if that does not equal zero, or if um, well this is get button up. So this is on release of the jump button. So let's just do get button. I think that one. Returns true while the virtual button identified by button name is held down. So this should return true if I'm pressing the left or right key, which would make horizontal not, it'd make it non zero, then make this expression true, because if this is zero. Zero does not equal zero returns false. And as long as we don't have this button down, which is the space bar, then this will be false. And so false or false is false. So now we can do private bool. Date function will do if not stopped. No, nope, just kidding. If stopped and is their input. In that case, then we will call start timer. Let's go test that out. So you see the timer is not moving. Once I jump, it starts counting. And if we restart it, we'll see that it will uh, start counting when I move left or right. Cool. 
So start timer on Britain button press, that's done. <clears throat> Okay. Well, I did some streaming earlier today. Um, I know I have scheduled to go until 8 Mountain Time, but I think I'm going to start wrapping it up. Uh, because I want to go to dinner. I've not done that yet. <laughs> So, let me pull up just like a notepad. I'm going to summarize some of the things I've done. So, I <clears throat> started off by writing the timer, timer scorer hooking up the timer scorer to the main scorer, optimizing the um, huh, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have more than three times for dinner. <laughs> optimizing the score algorithm for challenge um, let's see, redesigning the level to be more challenging, which led me to um, learn how to use the tile palette. Then I fixed bug with starting timer on input. Anybody else in the in the chat? Can you comment and say if there's anything I missed? some Doritos. I suppose I did some test runs. to um, look at this page here. This is the this is the page that has all the different mods that you can go through the tutorials to add these things to your to your world. Um, I think there's not much more I want to do before I move on to just starting work on my game. Uh, I'm curious what the splash of color one has in it. Probably nothing too complex. I think I already have a good idea of that. I've got some good ideas from, for some other cool things I could do, like uh, setting up the gems to be random colors. I could write a script where it's got a list of colors, and then each gem, when it gets instantiated, uh, will go and randomly pick one of those colors. That would be pretty cool. Um, Yeah, the one thing I know for sure that I want to do is also this animate your world seems pretty neat. That one seems like it would be cool. But um, when I looked at it before, it just kind of made the trees jiggle. It was kind of lame. So the last thing I know for sure I want to do is I want to build my game and be able to share it. There's this website called itch.io 
and it's a website where you can go and upload um, it's mostly for mostly for unity games but yeah you can go and upload games to this and then you should be able to play them straight from this website so that'd be cool and then I could share that with some people <clears throat> Share the link, to, and you can see some examples of other people's games and stuff. Some pretty cool ones on here. You can actually sell the games too, which is neat. So that's kind of what we got to look out for. Okay. Alrighty, I think I'm all done for tonight. Thank you to those viewers who came and watched and commented I appreciate that if um, <clears throat> if you want make sure to to give me a follow on twitch if you've got an account you can set up notifications so you're always notified whenever I stream I've got my Monday stream which I try to do 6 to 8 p.m. but I've been trying to stream or trying to do some game dev work every day and I stream whenever I'm doing work so um, I've had uh, stream almost every day this past week so if Mondays aren't great for you or if you'd like to check in at other times you can be notified by following me on Twitch if you can't watch the Twitch stream I upload things I uh, upload all of my streams to YouTube so you can watch them after the fact and uh, you can leave comments on there leave likes and stuff all right Thank you again, and have a good night.